Do you remember writing your name in the sand on the beach and then waiting for the waves to wash it off? Maybe you wrote the name of the person you were crushing on. Or perhaps you went for a romantic date on the seaside and you and your partner took turns writing A hards D or whatever. And then you waited for the waves to wipe the beach clean. That folks, whether you realized it or not, was probably the first time that you saw an actual demonstration of an important skill, letting go. And letting go is what we will talk about in this episode. Hi, I'm Sheila and this is Lumia 24. Light on. If we learn anything at all from nature, it is that letting go is an important part of the law of creation. You don't see trees holding on to old dried leaves, do you? Come autumn and the trees willingly shed their old leaves because that is the part of law of creation. You have to let go to make space for the new. Now we humans seem to be the only ones that hold on. We hold everything, feelings, things, people, experiences, grudges. Often we hear people tell us, just let it go dude, but to the person holding on, there are two questions. How do I let go? And more importantly, what do you mean by let go? Well, in order to answer that, I think it's important to know why we hold on. I was reading this beautiful book by Elizabeth Kubler-Ross on death and dying, where she discusses the five stages of grief, which are important to move you towards the adjustment phase. And it made me realize that this five-step process can be applied to any situation that requires adjustment. Because, especially in the things that we hold on to, the things with which we are obsessed, they are all just things which we have difficulty adjusting, right? We want to hold on to those things, people, places, words and situations because we never wanted to lose them in the first place. And when we hold on longer than usual, that is when we get stuck in the bargaining stage of adjustment. Bargaining is saying, if I do this, then he or she will behave like that or things will be different. I also have clients who are sometimes stuck in the area of, if I can just understand why this happened, then maybe I can get over it. All of these are bargains. The problem is that, these bargains are rarely to never satisfied. Stalking is another extreme form of bargaining where you say, if I can hang around, I'm still in his or her presence and we're not really over. You know, of course, that stalking sometimes becomes extreme and violent. And this is because the person is stuck in this phase and is unwilling to move on. If you're thinking, well, I don't do that. I'm a pro at letting go. I have news for you. Sometimes bargaining takes other forms. Ever felt bitterness about something? I was supposed to have that promotion, that person, that thing, and I will continue raving and ranting until I rightfully get it. <music> felt self-pity and kept holding on to what you think is the rightful picture of things in your head? You are saying, maybe if I keep holding on, Someone will cave in and let me move back home. And we are so scared of any kind of change that we would rather hold on to that which feels familiar than try to bring in a new way of life. Of course, these bargains are often very unconscious. They are sneaky little buggers, but they are our ways of refusing to adjust. Sometimes we use the past to justify our current decisions and that's the reason we don't want to let go. Let's say your relationship ended and you still feel incredible anger and resentment towards your ex. Maybe at first, this anger helped you move forward. But you will see that as time passes, that is unhealthy. This is the story that you use to create all your new relationships. So when you're unable to let go, that becomes a part of your story and works against you, holding you back. Now you know that physically when you're constipated, you feel uneasy, you seek help and you do whatever you can to ease up your system. 
well metaphorically too not letting go is keeping you stuck in your stories your excuses and your blames and is as toxic to both your mental and physical health i'm a huge advocate of action which is why at this point i'm going to share with you a fun tool to help you let go ready this is the tennis ball backpack method get yourself a pack of 12 to 15 tennis balls those tiny lightweight balls that kids play with that will also work now label each ball with whatever you want to let go your anger grudge hurtful words past relationships current dysfunctional one your stress frustration whatever everything that you need to let go of but did not have the courage or the clarity till now now fill a backpack with these balls and go for a light jog or a brisk walk when your heartbeat has picked up and you feel the rush start by throwing these balls one by one as you jog keep repeating i let go of the old and let in the new feel the lightness as your bag begins to empty throw the balls as far and with as much force as you would like to just remember to pick them all up again okay no littering <laughs> trying to push life into the place of your making you would rather be right than happy if you face what has happened accept that you can't change it and then move on inevitably new doors will open up better opportunities will arise and most of all you will have a better story that moves you forward instead of holding you back like buddhist teacher ajahn chah says when you let go a little you will have a little peace when you let go a lot you will have a lot peace and like all simple things this holds a lot of truth letting go means being willing to allow life to carry you to a new place adjustment is such a huge part of living a happy life write into me tell me what your experience has been in letting go and remember to share this video and spread the message you make a difference